from in Hollywood. It's the Tom Mikey Show. Oh my God! Oh, here I go! Oh, and now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's in every kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for joining again. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. The Tom Lager Show is going green. So effective today, no more plastic bags. We are, we are done with the plastic bags here. From now on, it's paper only. And you know how many plastic bags this show goes through. That's it. I want those seagulls strangling themselves, so uh, there will be no more Tom Lyka show plastic bags. I know many of you like the plastic. Everybody's making changes. Everybody's going great. We're going great. We are going great. The Tom Lyka show. That's right. Now, of course, uh, we do put out more air pollution than the top three oil companies combined. But uh, we are uh, getting carbon credits. So the Tom Likas show is going great. That's right. We here at the Tom Likas show really, really care about the environment and you. And so, therefore, uh, our show is going green in every possible way. Examples, we're using nothing but recycled broadcasting equipment here. No new equipment. We are using the oldest possible electronic equipment to do the Tom Likas show. This is equipment that has been used by generation after generation of broadcaster. Because we're going green here at the Tom Likas show. That's right. We are environmentally responsible. This microphone I'm speaking into, they don't even make these anymore. Now, we could have gone out and uh, we could have had CBS buy the most modern equipment. We could have had the most modern digital equipment available, but not us. Because we're going green. That's exactly right. In fact, think how much paper we save by putting the radio program on the air as opposed to writing all this stuff out and and, and mailing it to you. I mean, we are saving thousands of trees and all that noxious ink we're not using to print out my words. The Tom Liga Show is going green. We care about the environment and we care about our listeners. I mean, we care about the generations to come. That's right. In every way, we are going to be an environmentally responsible program from now on. See this can I'm drinking out of? Aluminum. Uh, Do we have a recycle bin over there, uh, Art? We do well. Why don't we, why don't we uh, just take that cardboard box and uh, let's draw a little recycling symbol on that, so we can start recycling these. Good. We're going to be environmentally responsible from now on. Also, from now on, we're only going to drink wine out of glass bottles. <laughs> That's it. With organic cork. Because we are environmentally responsible. Now, may I ask this question of you listening to the program right now? Everybody is saying the same thing, okay? And, like, you kind of have to go along with it because everybody's saying the same thing, how we all 
We care. We care about the environment. We care about you. Yes, we're, <laughs> we're going green. What does that mean? What does it mean? <laughs> but everybody's saying it. I was watching uh, Sunday Night Football at NBC one night, and they did uh, they did the halftime show in the dark to show how green they were going. You're kidding me, right? <laughs> I mean, if you really want to go green, why not why didn't NBC shut off the transmitter at night when they're running reruns and infomercials? Why don't they just shut off the transmitter? Now that would be going green. I'll tell you what, seriously speaking. Go with green. You know, my apologies to all the uh, the people I know who work at companies who are going green. It, it, this one's doing it too, right? I think we're doing it too. Uh, so all I can say is this: um, I don't understand what what they're talking about. <laughs> yes, we're going green. Okay. By the way, my Lexus I drove here is getting 12 miles to the gallon. I want, you, I want you to know that I drove my big tank over here today, and I was the only one in it. I did not carpool. Gary had to drive his own car in today. So did Art. So did Dee. <laughs> yeah, why don't we carpool? I'll pick you guys up. I'll go to Gary's place in Hollywood. And Art, where do you live? Like the 909? Where do you live? Uh, Silver Lake. Silver. Oh, you're in Silver Lake. Your family lives out there somewhere. You live in Silver Lake. Okay, I'll stop over at Silver Lake, get you. And then Dean, well, Dean's still in West L.A. He hasn't moved to the 90069 yet. So I'll go out and pick up Dean, and then all four of us will drive in my Lexus to work to show how environmentally responsible we're being. It's Earth Day, for God's sake. We're going green. That's right. I don't know. I, I, I know there are probably people out there, because so many companies are doing this, there are people who get very excited about this idea of companies saying they're going green. Oh, by the way, the first ones to jump on this, and, and I say this as someone who owns a mutual fund that invests in these companies, oil companies. You watch uh, like CNBC or CNN during the day and you would have these commercials for like BP talking about how they're going green. And uh, they're they're a uh, environmentally responsible oil company. <laughs> it's like, you're an oil company for God's sake! You don't don't even pretend. Come on. Hell, with gas prices as they are right now, why does an oil company even have to advertise? You got the product; we need it. End of story. As a as a shareholder in BP, I say stop advertising altogether. Stop it. I, you know, be, being that I, uh, through a mutual fund, I own shares in British Petroleum. Let me just say this is one of the owners of BP. We got the oil and everybody else needs it. Okay? So let's just stop advertising. If you pump it, they will come. No need to be advertising and telling people how environmentally responsible we are at BP. Or we at Exxon. Exxon Mobil, for that matter. I also own stock in them through my mutual fund. Uh, you know what? We got oil. You need it. End of story. When you bring your big SUV into the gas station, we got the oil for you. Sure we do. Four twenty-five a gallon. Come on in. How much advertising do you need? We got the goods. You need them. End of story. We don't need to have cartoons of the tiger in your tank or anything. Forget it. Who cares? We got the oil. You have to come to us to get it. End of story. We don't need to give away like Chevron, cute little cars that go beep beep and have little faces on them. Forget it. We got oil, baby. We got the oil and you got big friggin' tanks. You need to get them filled up with the stuff we got and you can only get it from three or four or five companies like us. That's it. Why do we advertise? Why do we wash windows at our gas stations? Forget it. We don't need to do that. Mind if I check your oil? Forget it. 
We got gasoline. We own all the gasoline between four or five companies. Why do we have to kowtow to anybody? We don't even have to tell people we're going green. If people were going green, they wouldn't be coming to the gas station. Stupid. Are you with me on this? Sound like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I support the feminists. Are you a feminist? Yes, I am. Really? Yeah, they're 100% equal to men. I don't pay for nothing. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, this does me in. So I took a peek at the uh, ball game between the uh, Los Angeles Angels and the Boston Red Sox. And I'm not making this up. The Boston Red Sox for Earth Day are wearing a recycle logo on their uniform. Come on. Have you ever seen how much trash they throw out at the ballpark after the game? (laughs) You gotta be kidding me. How about they make everybody throw the baseballs back? After the the foul balls will hit into the stands, make everybody throw them back. Let's recycle for real. Jeez. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. No doubt about it. Let's say hello here to uh, James on the Tom Likas show. Tom. James. Hey, listen, man. I agree mostly with what you're saying, except... uh, you know, I bought a diesel truck about five years ago, and diesel was about a dollar thirty. It was the cheapest, and uh, you know, diesel is a byproduct of gasoline refining. And I, I just feel as though they're ramming it up, you know where, uh, because they can, because the public are a bunch of pussies, the consumers, and they don't do anything about it. You know, you're right. You guys just keep, you have the product, and we'll keep buying it, but. If the consumers had any nuts, they would put together some sort of strike, and believe me, it wouldn't last more than a day. In the no, price. no, believe me, it wouldn't make any difference at all. Because you know think- of, Nope, because you'd go on strike for one day, and the next day you'd need gas, and you'd come right back and buy it. Okay, what about, what about the trucking We'd industry? save money at the oil company because we'd have a skeleton crew at the gas station that day. Yeah, but what about the trucking industry? The whole world revolves around semi-trucks. They use diesel fuel. It's about a, a, a $700 fill-up on 300 They pass that tank. cost right on to you. Well, that's what I say. The consumers are a bunch of idiots, and they let it happen. Well, and maybe it would take more than a day. You know, you know, no, what it would take is people using less gasoline, less petroleum products, but they won't. Well, and the oil companies yeah, know it, it and, and therefore, this is the way it's going to be. Well, exactly. Less means none. Okay, tomorrow. Nobody go to work. It won't happen, but, I mean, that's what it would take, and trust me. No, that's not what it would take. That is not what it would take. What it would take is what people don't want to do. People don't want to cut their use of oil. They don't. They say they do, but they don't. End of story. Well, I have a lifestyle where I need a pickup. I need a big Fine. Maybe you need to change your lifestyle. Well, no, I just need to keep getting screwed at the pump, I guess. Well, because you, because guess what? Uh, gasoline is not a birthright. No, it's not. But the, but, but the price... Um, now, by the know, way, I, you're complaining about the price. I'm about to go to France. Do you yeah, know what? Know, it's seven or eight bucks a gallon. Right. Said, oh. You damn straight it is. <laughs> well, I'm, I, I, I'm amazed know. at what people complain about. Gasoline is cheap in the United States. Well, in 03 or 02, it cost me about 30 bucks to fill my tank. Now it's $110 a week. Part, by know? the way, by the way, part of the reason for that is the oil companies, and part of the reason for that is the declining dollar. If the price of a barrel of oil stayed the same in its local currency, whatever that happens to be in whatever country, Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, whatever, uh, if the dollar declines in value, you have to pay more dollars to buy a barrel of oil. It's that simple. Right. That's uh, one I, of the reasons. And by the way, it's it's one of the big factors in why gasoline costs so much. 
Okay, but saying that they're refining and green, you know, that they're doing a, a, a different formula and all this is all a bunch of... Well, they are. Somewhere. Well, wait a minute. They are doing that for California. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But well, you see, what it boils know. down to is you don't want to change your lifestyle and the other people don't want to change their lifestyle. And so no, just, what I know. did, and I'm, I'm being honest with you, what I did was when I heard all these people complaining about the price of gasoline... Uh, I called uh, the company I invest with, and I said, uh, I want to invest in the oil companies. And I, I invested in an energy mutual fund that's up over 50% since I bought in. So uh, you just keep that lifestyle the way it is, James. You keep driving. I'm right, loving it. Have um, a good day, Just buddy. call me McDonald's. I'm loving it. That's right. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone. Everything gets upset. Brian on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, I just want to. I work for a computer firm, and the new thing now is to go green and to virtualize, which means put a whole bunch of servers and PCs on one machine, so you replace a whole room with. If it had 15 servers in the room, you'd replace it with two. But the thing is, it cost it cost the company in labor like three times as much to do the labor to get that all set up. And when disasters hit, the recovery has to come immediately because now all of your resources are in one box. So at all hours of the night, we'll get a call saying, hey, we need you to fix this now. So we charge them double time because it's at night, and we need people there that know how to use this brand new technology. So we charge them twice as much. And at the end of the day, we're just making money, and they're just running a couple less servers. I'm, I'm sure that's true. And then they can say, look, we're going green. Of course, no, and that's and that's the big marketing push. That's that's how right. that's how we sell it. That's one of the big things we say. You know, you can just replace this whole room by two boxes. Your electricity bill go down and all this stuff. And going green, helping the environment. And it's a bunch of BS. Because at the end of the day, we just make more money, and that's really what it's about at a company level. The only way that anything's going to change is if we, like you were saying before, like if we change our daily lifestyle. We want to complain about gas prices, but we don't want to stop driving. And and we will not stop driving until we can't afford it anymore. Of course. And then it's too late. But your idea was great. Invest in the oil companies. That's a brilliant idea. Right. Why even even if you can only afford the minimum investment. Yeah, yeah anything. As long as, as long as your money doubles, it doesn't matter. My, I, it, my, my money went up 50% in the couple of years I've been in. Crazy. And it, it, it makes so much sense. It's the simplest thing. Uh, and and so you know any increases in gasoline I can afford them because uh, it goes in one end and out the other. But at the end of the day, the corporations are isn't going to be what saves us in this whole going green and saving energy. It's going to be the the people at home. I mean, I can think of a hundred things that people do on a daily basis that you could change very easily that would actually make an effect if you t talked about an aggregate scale. You know, right. but people like, aren't going to do it. Okay, you know, this I mean, is just a lot of blah, 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 blue. That's all it is. But, and, it, and it's silly because it's so simple. I mean, everybody's TV has a sleep timer, but how many people fall asleep with their TV on and they wake up at 7 in the morning and their TV's still on? No, yeah, it's true. Not new technology. It's just no one's willing to use it. You're right. Turn off a light. I mean, how much would it cost to go to Home Depot and get some light timers? Again. I don't think the average person cares. They here's let me tell you what the average person's opinion is about the environment, about going green. Okay, uh, let me just put it in terms like uh, me and you. Okay, uh -huh. I want you to go green. Right. I want everyone listening to go green. And then when I leave here, I'm putting my big fat ass on the leather seat in my uh, Lexus, getting twelve miles to the gallon. And I'm going to drive home puffing away, and I'm going to enjoy the hell out of it. And I hope you go green, because it's important that you do that. But just not you. you right. Well, you that's what I'm saying. That's everybody. everybody that's else. everybody's. That's, that's everybody. That's that's the attitude of everybody. But it's the yes, American I think, I think going thing. green is great, but I'm not giving anything up. And that's the way. That's the American way, and that's what has to change, and it doesn't seem like it's going it's to. Not, I, again, all we understand is money. Exactly. When we really can't afford to drive, that is when people will stop driving, and not a minute before. But anytime any of these big companies, like you said, they turned off the lights at 
some halftime show. I mean, that's just a bunch of horse horse crap. That's like, right. It's horse know? crap. It, it doesn't it doesn't mean anything. It, of course, it doesn't mean anything. Are you kidding me? Well, they're kidding someone. If NBC was serious about going green, they'd cancel the biggest loser, for Christ's sake. That's the biggest. What's more polluting than that? <laughs> that would be great. I'll tell you what. I'll show them how to go green. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great, to, it's great to hear your voice, Tom. I've, I've only called once before. This is awesome. Thank you for that, Brian. <laughs> Let's show the networks how to go green. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. Flavor Flav's getting the show on my network TV. Cancel it now. Just go dark for that half hour, okay? Show you how to go great. Let's say hello here to, uh, oh, Van. What a great name for a guy with a concern about the environment. Van on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. How you doing? Not bad. Is First your son, is your, is your son named Mini Van? I'm sorry? Is your son named Minivan? Not uh, yet. Don't have one. <laughs> Just checking. Um, let's see. First of all, I'm not a tree hugger. Um, I've always tried to recycle just because I thought it was a pretty decent idea. Just the little stuff, cans, paper, stuff like that. Um, I was driving a car that got 40 miles to the gallon. I bought a diesel that gets 49 miles to the gallon, and then the price of diesel went up. And that, hello? I think we at the oil companies are pretty smart, don't you? Well, the oil companies have us by the balls. Huh? And I'm glad you're investing because every time I drive past a mobile corporate headquarters here in Dallas. Think of me. Oh, no, I'm thinking about a couple of sticks of dynamite. Take away some of those corporate profits. Oh, don't be doing that now. Because by the way, by the way, don't knock corporate profits, and I'm going to tell you why. If you have a 401k or an IRA, chances are you're invested in an oil company. I see. I, I'll bet you don't even know what mutual funds you're invested in. I'll bet you don't even know how many oil companies you own. Well, I'm not invested. I don't have any mutual funds right now. You don't have any, you know, what, retirement income? You have no retirement investments? Not currently. Really not currently. Not currently. Yes, your money is sitting on the sidelines right now, right? I don't have a whole lot of money to invest, Tom. You're the type of guy who would take a stick of dynamite. Because you got a lot of free time. No, I work quite a bit. I just don't make a whole lot of money, that's all. Step it up, Van. But uh, the only guy is by the short and curlies, and there's not a lot we can yeah, here's what you can do. Drive less. Well, I mean, you know, we can't kill off the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the customers. At some point, uh, it will level out. At some point, I mean. But it could be $8 a gallon like, like in France. It could be, I say it could be $8 a gallon like France. It could be. That may, that may be the point, but I'm looking into alternative technologies. But they'll, they'll figure out a way to charge us more for that, too. Well, <laughs> good luck. See, if you own my mutual fund, you wouldn't be worried about it. You'd sleep well at night. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here is Corey on the Tom Likas show. What's up, Tom? Not much, Corey. Hey, all these guys, they're talking about wanting to not go to a gas station one time out of a month, I've got a math for me that I'm going to email you. If you X out, let's say Exxon, and do not buy Exxon gas for an entire month, not slowing down your business or your commuting or going out of town or traveling. Trust me when I tell you, as an Exxon shareholder, this is small potatoes. It would not matter a bit. For an entire month? Well, here's what happens if people do that. All they have to do is lower the price of gasoline to one penny below what you're paying at another gas station. The boycott is over. Well, see, that's where you've got to come together and you've got to prosper. But people go don't come together. Everybody is out for number one. People do not come together. Well, they Tom, don't. Hey, 
I could care less. I mean, I can afford to put gas in my car. I'm just saying, you people know. don't come together. Don't well, you think that corporate America knows that? Uh, I, I, as an investor in corporate America, I'm counting on it. Well, I'm telling you a way of getting around it, and the people that are out there griping about it. You're not getting pain, around it. Let, pain, let's say, yeah, let's pain, say people do. Let's say people say that's it. Exxon Mobil, we're not going there for a month. Right. And Exxon Mobil lowers the price of gasoline to one penny below anybody else in town. Do not go. They, they will go. No, they will. Yes, if they will. Together and Have you haven't you ever seen the lines at Costco? Do you do you ever go to a Costco that sells gasoline? Have you seen the lines? That people are in to save six cents a gallon. Hey, they're you know, probably spending that much in having their engine Costco, idle. Then. They're probably they are probably. Don't go to Chevron. But what do you you th- Costco is getting the Costco. You're a moron. Costco is getting Costco is getting the gasoline from the same sources as everybody else. From everybody, from Halliburton, from everybody. They're else. getting the everybody's getting it from the same few places. Don't you know that? It's like it's like yes, big screen do TVs. Know you know, plasma screens are made by like three companies, and but there's I'm there's a hundred different I'm names on plasma it. screens. It it's the same thing with gasoline. It doesn't matter. So what? You know, oh, we're only going to Costco. Believe me, the Let's same see. people selling gasoline are going Tom. to continue to make money. Tom, what happened a few years ago when the diesel drivers drivers got sick and tired of paying extreme prices for the diesel fuel when it was above gas? Nothing. They it's still it, it, it has done nothing. DC. Have you seen the we price? Have, have you seen have. the price of diesel? Have you yes, seen? I it? have. Yes, they're they're right now. The truckers have had it. I mean, they'll just keep jacking the prices up on us, and you'll keep saying the price. In one year's time, you will see. A hey, sirloin steak. You talk about to me twenty. It's bucks. already it's happening. Sixty bucks, Corey. It's already happening. What? No trucker. What? No trucker. No trucker is absorbing these costs. They're all being passed on, and the price okay. of food is going sky high. Okay. Well, we, as America, need to stand together and do something. If you're saying my way is not what you do, put gas in your car. Use less. Go to New York. The only you thing you can do York. is the thing you won't do. Use less. I don't want to use less. That's my point. You, you don't want to and use I'm less, and nobody else use wants less. to use. That's my point. If I'm people don't use less, use you less. have I'm no other weapons. The I'm only weapon you have is to use less gasoline. That's the weapon you have, and you won't use it. So no. Therefore, the prices will not come down, period. End of story. No. I Yes, they will. I'm no, they won't. You. Yes. No. Isolate no. one of the three major companies uh, and don't you've buy. Said this. You've They're- said this already. Thank you. Tom. 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 Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. This is my Sunday theory. It's delicious as soon as you get it. Leave it out in the sun for a few hours and see if you still want to eat it. Because that's what happens to a hot chick over time. Okay? It becomes a big mess. Okay? It gets all over you. It's in your hair. It's a mess. It's on your clothes. And you don't know what to do about it anymore. You know? Just throw every bit away. Just don't do it. Just break. If you have a girlfriend that you feel like you love her so much... Dump her. Dump her today. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. The Tom Likas Show is going green. That's right. I'm without seeds. Oh, dirt weed here. It's one 800 tom That's our telephone number. Yes, Earth Day. Exciting, huh? <laughs> Rusty on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. First time, long time. Yes. Hey, I think I have a solution to the problem. Maybe not a solution. What would that but, be? Uh, the problem, too, uh, with gas prices. I think that... And, you know, everybody needs gas, but I think that if we were to punish one company, just nobody buy Exxon. Maybe The last guy who called, I don't know if you're listening to the Tom Likas show, the last caller said the exact same thing you're saying. Oh, no, I turned my radio off. This has been, well, was it, you could hear it over the phone because we play the air feed down the phone. Hmm. 
And uh, the fact is, as I told the last guy, that it, it, none of that stuff matters. It, it, if people tried doing that, and by the way, I don't believe the whole country would hang together to do such a thing. But if they did, all Exxon Mobil would have to do is lower the price of their gasoline to one penny below what everyone else is selling it for. And that would be the end of it right there. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think America's in a situation where I know I personally don't drive any more than I have to. Uh-huh. I mean, but but I work in construction, and, uh, you know, we drive wherever we need to drive in order to do the jobs. And I feel a lot of people do the same thing. So I think... America's kind of crippled by the gas companies. But but why do you say that? America's crippling itself. It has nothing to do with being crippled by the gas companies. People can cut back. They don't want to. You've heard other people calling here. They don't want to cut back. They don't want to give up their SUVs or their minivans. They don't want to give up their trucks. You get all those TV commercials with big, tough trucks. Trucks being dropped off of bridges and, yeah, there's nothing more American than owning a big truck. And, and that, that's how we are. Yeah, I think, I think the majority of people wouldn't mind giving up some of the things. I think some of the people that have. You know what? Let me tell, have you seen these cars, these smart cars? No, I haven't. Yeah. They, they, they're just starting to be sold now in Southern California. These are the smallest cars you've ever seen. And, you know, in Paris and Rome, and I was in Paris and Rome last summer, they're all over the place. But people in this country would never drive one of those cars. It'll be a little fad here, so people will drive some smart cars. But the bottom line is <laughs> most Americans want to be able to put, uh, you know, 17 cases of uh, Sierra Nevada from uh, Costco in their uh, trunk. And they want to be able to put lumber from the Home Depot in there. No one's going to drive smart cars in this country in any big number. Forget it. Not going to no. happen. No, are smart cars more like Priuses because, you they're, know. Like, they're smaller Prius. than Priuses. A Prius costs more than, they, like, you know, what a regular gasoline car would cost. And I think that's half of the problem, too. What do you mean you it's half the save, problem? You might save money on gas, but now you're paying more money. Uh, for your car payment. Ah, but then the question becomes, do you care about saving gasoline or do you and saving the environment, or do you care about saving money? Well, I think the bottom line is everybody's about saving money. Well, and that's my point. Until it's more economical to do something else other than drive a car with gasoline in it, people are going to continue using just as much as they've always used. Well, don't you feel that uh, that the gasoline companies of America are really hurting the everyday people. Nope, America the gasoline itself. companies of America are doing exactly what they're supposed to do, serving their shareholders. And by the way, you can be a shareholder. If you have a job and a 401K or an IRA, you probably already own shares in an oil company. Yeah. I'm and sure benefit from, and, and you benefit from the profits they make. Yeah, but don't you think their profits are a little much? No, I think the profits are exactly what they should be. Uh, every company out there should try to make as much money as it can. That's their job. Yeah, but don't you feel that they have some kind of like a monopoly on the situation? No, I, yeah, if the, the word would not be they if we were talking about a monopoly. It's more than one oil company. And they have to get the oil all from these uh, other countries, and they're pretty much at the mercy of Venezuela and Saudi Arabia and the other countries that sell oil. Yeah, I wish we had a, a better system of alternate fuels, like the government would would help out and give us, uh, you know, alternate fuels, because a lot of the countries that we buy oil from are the well, countries but, but that no one's going to develop oil. alternate alternative fuels until there's a profit to be made in it, and then you'll be paying to use those. Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, trust me, solar energy will not be a major factor until somebody figures out a way to charge you for the sun. And by the way, somebody already has. I, I'm talking about putting solar panels in at my ranch. And I found out that if I choose, to, I, if I choose, I can rent the solar equipment and then pay by the kilowatt hour that I use. Hmm. Then I don't have to make the big investment in, in infrastructure. Yeah, it seems to me that, you know, America is one of the biggest agricultural country, countries in the world, that if we can produce more ethanol, ethanol ethanol, gasoline or other alternative fuels, we could take money out of the pocketbooks of all no, those Middle Well, Eastern we can't. We can't because there's no evidence 
that producing more ethanol is more cost efficient than than using oil. In fact, the the fact that we are using corn and corn alone for ethanol has pushed the prices. Have you looked at the price of a loaf of bread lately? Have you looked at the price of things like corn? Have you looked at the price of all grains? Been to the supermarket lately? Have you seen what things cost? Even things like orange juice? The fact is that farms have thrown all their eggs in one basket, so to speak, and they are now uh, trying to produce corn for ethanol. And the result of that is that uh, many farmers aren't producing anything but corn for ethanol. And the result is that, that grains like wheat and rice are going through the roof. And I'm sure you haven't watched the world news recently, but in some other countries they've actually had food riots because people can't afford the basic staples like beans and rice. And it's caused by the, the push to make corn the one and only source of ethanol. When you can make ethanol from switchgrass, essentially weeds. But nope, we're going to do it with corn. Well, I guess I would feel better if, you know, I knew, even if I was paying more for gas than what I'm paying now, but if I knew that money was instead of going to Iraq or Venezuela or all the other countries or Russia, if I knew a lot of that money was coming back into the American economy through agricultural, whatever we're using, switchgrass, well, corn the more or whatever. Well, the more we raise the price, the more we raise the price of our agricultural products, the less other countries are going to buy them. Well, unfortunately, I think there's a, or I think there's a lot of countries that just can't produce a lot of agricultural products, and those yeah, but there are cheaper sources of those products. It is cheaper to get oranges from Brazil than the United States. It's a fact. What about other products? What about other agricultural products? Fruits and, veg fruits and vegetables. Again, and vegetables. Uh, have you been watching the prices at the supermarket? I don't think you have. No, my wife does most of the shopping. Yeah, well, maybe you ought to take a trip to the supermarket and educate yourself. Maybe that's true. And see how much they're charging for milk, orange juice, bread, grains like rice, breakfast cereal. Do you know I saw a box of Kellogg's Corn Flakes for over six bucks in a store? Do you have any idea what's happening to food prices? And it's a result of trying to produce ethanol out of corn. Yeah, but I don't mind that as much is because I know that that really? money is going back into the American economy. Oh. You know? That money that, but it's that, coming out of your pocket. That's coming out of my pocket, but it's going. So into now, a, a, before, a before, 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 wait a minute, before you could simply drive less, or walk to work, save the money, and be environmentally responsible. Now, even people who walk to work are going to have to eat a six-dollar box of cornflakes for breakfast. I don't think a lot of people have the option of walking to work. You I know mean, what I mean? Finding cheaper ways to go carpooling or whatever, telecommuting. The point is, people who've tried to be environmentally responsible end up paying anyway. Well, most people I know try to carpool as much as they can. The problem is, is unlike France and England and maybe some of those other countries where the gas prices are outrageous, you know, $8, $9, $10 a gallon, here the, everything is so spread out. That, you know, you I understand, but Southern, like Southern California was based on the car, and it was based on 29 cents a gallon gas. And now we're paying for it. Now, why do you think they're building so many apartments in places like downtown L.A. and in Hollywood? Because uh, you, here you are calling in from Riverside. There's an awful lot of people who don't feel like paying the cost of driving from Riverside to L.A. Yeah, but nobody wants to live in L.A. either. Well, because of the, all the problems, nobody that, wants to But the bottom line problems. here is choices have to be made. So I guess it's a situation where we're just stuck. Uh, yes, it is. All well, I can say I is keep buying gasoline because I own stock in all the companies. And whichever one you decide to boycott, don't worry, I own the others too. <laughs> all right. Can you blow me up, Tom? Of course I can. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Or hear the live stream of our show by going to our website. It's simply BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.